Markov chains. Hello. Uh, today, I am going to show how to use Markov chains and masking in title cycles to generate patterns, generate beats or patterns of sound. Um, first off, the Markov functionality in title cycles is not documented. Uh, but if you go to the title source code, bear with me here, uh, there is this file called ui.hs, and there is a Markov pat function in here, and th this is the this is the function, and it has a little bit of description here, but this is the function that's in title that allows you to um, make Markov chain based patterns. Uh, there's also a blog post on blog.titlecycles.org that uh, kind of talks about these techniques. Um, I think some of this is a little obsolete, but uh, it's pretty, it's, most of it is true to what, what I'm going to demo today. All right. But yeah, uh, this is an undocumented feature. Uh, which I, I or somebody should contribute to the title docs to include it. Um, anyway, uh, let's get some sound going here first. So I'm going to use a bass drum sound and a, uh, like a hi-hat sound. And there's another sound I want to Let's see. Is it this one? Not that one. That works. All right, so those, those will be the sounds we work with. UL3, Perry3, Perry2. Okay, so let's use it. Let's, let's make a Markov chain that uh, produces more of an interesting pattern with these sounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the sample that's being played with a Markov chain. So we call Markov Pat. Then we need to give it the length of our pattern. I'm going to say 16 steps. And the beginning state index. And we're going to start at state 0. So everything is 0 based indexed. 0 based Zero based index, not indexed. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to put two states in here uh, initially. So let's just start with this bass drum and hi hat sound. Um, so two states. And so what a Markov chain is, is it's a, uh, you have a list of states, and each state has a, a, a probability or a likelihood of, of what state it will transition to. So if there's two states, um, we're going to create two new lists here inside of our chain. So these inner lists are our states. Now each state needs a probability of uh, probability of how likely it will be to move to a different state or stay in its current state. So if I do a 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in this first state, that means there's a 50% chance it'll stay on the first state. 50% chance it'll move to the second state. And same thing, in the second state here, I can also set probabilities. So I'll just keep it at 50% all around. And that's it, that's our Markov chain. If I take this and evaluate it, let me bring up my terminal here. So if, if I evaluate just this uh, line 10, it will produce a Markov chain pattern. So this is a random pattern that it just generated. 16 steps, starting at state zero, and it's it's flipping a coin basically every time it uh, starts at one state, it flips a coin to see what the next state is. If I change this to be, you know, zero probability, probability it'll go to state two, it should be all zeros. And if I change this to zero and one, then yeah, you can kind of see it flipping back and forth. Um, I can manipulate these numbers so it always stays in one state or, or whatever I want. Okay, so this is just the raw function. It's generating the same sequence every time. Um, I, I don't remember if it's because it's a Haskell constraint or if it's title cycles, but this is going to produce the same sequence every time I evaluate this. But if we evaluate it in the context of a running pattern in title, like if we put it in the context of this D1, we'll get a different Markov pat every cycle. 
Uh, okay, so this is great. Line seven is kind of what we want, but let me get rid of this. There we go. Um, <clears throat> but we need to add something to this so that we can map this pattern of zeros and ones to these two samples. And to do that, there's a function called fmap, which I don't understand it very well, but it will map a incoming numeric pattern to something else. And we want to map it to these sample names. So we do fmap, and then we need to pass in a list of the target values. So we'll do ul3 and peri3. So this, oops, there we go. And then we have to add a couple exclamation points. I'm not sure why. I'm not a Haskell guy. So anyway, I know the syntax. I don't necessarily know why. <laughs> anyway, um, let's neat this up a little bit. So now we have a uh, Markov pattern, Markov chain of zeros and ones that map to these two samples. And let's see what this sounds like. All right, so it's kind of a, a fire hose of sound right now, but uh, that's fine. Um, now, if I um, want to introduce a third sample, let's say Perry 2, now I need to add more states. So let's uh, do a little bit of, I don't know, this might make it more, <laughs> hopefully this isn't harder to understand, but it's easier for me. So I've got my Markov pad, and then my, my states are all going to be on their own line here. So we need to create a third state. And if we make this also 50% chance uh, to move to the other two, let's see what this sounds like. That sounds exactly the same. Why is that? that oh, haha. <laughs> That's because I forgot to add a third probability to move to the third state. As you can see, this is a little tedious, which is, I'll, I'll bring this up in a little bit here. There we go. So now we've got that additional percussive sound in there. Um, okay, so one, uh, well, I, I actually, before I go on, you can also do rests. So if you put a tilde in here, that's the symbol for a rest or a, a, an empty note in title. get a little bit of silence in there. Okay, so right now it's almost just purely random. I could I could just do a choose function instead of using a Markov chain at this point. But the 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 power of a Markov chain is that you can weight the probabilities a certain way. So if I like for every bass drum, if I want a very low chance it's going to fire two bass drums in a row. I give that maybe a low 10% chance, and maybe it's a high high chance, maybe 90% chance it's going to go to the, the hi-hat, and then maybe a low low percent chance, 10%, it's going to go to the third state. So you may be looking at this and saying, well, that doesn't add up to one. Well, it doesn't have to. The Markov pat function will normalize whatever values you put in here so that the... Um, Distribution is correct. I don't know how else to say it. You can put whatever numbers you want in here. Basically, the bigger numbers mean higher probability it's going to go to that state. So what we're saying is from state one, there's a very high probability we're going to go to state two. So bass drum to high app. Now from state two, I'm going to say maybe we want a high likelihood it's going to go to the rest. And then from the rest, um, let's say a very low probability it's going to go back to the hi-hat and maybe 50-50 chance it'll go back to a bass drum or stay on the uh, produce another rest so now it's it's producing something a little more repetitious there, there's there's randomness thrown in but you're almost always hearing a uh, bass drum, hi-hat, rest in that order. But there's probability it will f do something else. And if I put 
the other sample back in. So it's it's kind of it's repetitive, it's pattern-like, uh, but there's some randomness thrown in. There's some chance that it's going to go to a lesser likely state. Is that the right word? A, a state that's unlikely based on the values I put here. Uh, so that's cool. So uh, what can we do with this? Uh, so so I've also been introducing masking into this to uh, kind of introduce another layer of repetition or pattern so that um, it doesn't sound like just a fire hose of notes. Um, so if we do mask, zero and one. So mask accepts a pattern of ones and zeros where one means on and zero means off. So what this means here is that the first half of the cycle will be on then and the second half of the cycle will be off. So let's just see what this sounds like. So that's kind of cool. Um, we can make the mask whatever we want. And whatever you, whatever you put in the double quotes here is um, over the course of one cycle. So this is just, you know, I don't know how many events this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine on off switches per cycle or per measure. Uh, let's see what this sounds like. increase some of the probability here. So the result of this is kind of a repetitive feel. It, it, it's in, that, that where the rhythm or the sounds sound um, like they are repeating in, in a repetitive rhythm, but there's some randomness thrown in so that they might be, uh, might move, you know, might play a different sound. And the mask just kind of adds a, a pattern of silence in there that um, makes it a little easier to kind of latch on to, I guess. Let's add in a second sound here so you can kind of hear where the pattern starts. So yeah, it's um, like I said, it's kind of layers of repetition. Uh, you get a little bit of pattern interference with what the sound is, the samples are producing, and then what the mask is allowing to get through. And you can do a lot of crazy stuff with this mask. You know, you could even divide this by two or something. So it's, it's almost always the same cycle, but there's enough randomness thrown in where it's going to do something a little bit different. Um, so I like to work with just a few sounds in the, in the Markov chain. You know, this is three states. I could add a fourth state, but it's a little tedious to kind of keep adding stuff. So like if I wanted to add a, um, I don't know, UL, let's, let's add UL4. I don't even know what that sound is. Um, to do that, I'd have to... You know, I'd have to add a, a fourth state, and then each item in the list here has to have a fourth probability added to them. So it's a little tedious to kind of, you know, go back in here and, and, and modify this stuff. So I like to work with just maybe two or three elements, and then to kind of get more rhythmic regularity, I've been leaning on the, the mask function to do that. <laughs> that works. So these um, 
third and fourth states, I have it the probability kind of going everywhere. Um, but I can um, I'm gonna change it so that three usually goes to four, and four. I don't know. So I guess it depends on your ear and your taste and what you're listening for. But to my ear, this this approach has randomness and, and probability built in, but it's usually going to sound the same every time. And this is kind of just a quick way to generate, well, maybe not quick. <laughs> it's, a, it's a less declarative way of developing patterns. Instead of um, typing every uh, sample out, individually and placing them exactly where you want. This is a way of just kind of uh, letting it happen and, and throwing some chance in there, which I prefer. So it works for me. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's really all I wanted to share. So um, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, I probably explained something poorly. And if you have a question, uh, leave a comment or contact me directly. Um, if you know how to do that, <laughs> I'm on the internet. Go to kindom.com. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you next time. Okay. See you. Bye. Markov chains.